Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So during my Aero Deathstroke review, I asked you to submit all of your WTF questions about Isabel, Ravager, Slade's plans, and the rest of the season. So I picked 10 of them to answer in this video with one bonus question. If you're finding me for the first time, I typically do Q&A videos for all my favorite shows like Doctor Who, Game of Thrones, you know, anything that's worth doubling down on just because it's so much fun to talk about. So feel free to leave me any suggestions for future bonus Arrow videos in the comments. We've only got a few more episodes left before the finale. So time for questions. Let's talk our way through the WTF fest that was Destro. Careful for potential spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, but question number one comes from Slade Wilson himself, and he asks, there are some new images of Summer Gloud dressed in a costume like Slade's. Do you think that she's secretly Rose Wilson, or is she just Isabel dressed as Ravager? So that was actually a very good question because there were some images that posted really early Thursday morning and she basically is dressed like Rose Wilson is Ravager. The images do look legit, but based on the information we have right now, we cannot say that she's Rose outright, but we can call her Ravager. They might just be messing with the character a little bit. Arrow has been pretty faithful to the comics. Like when Billy Wintergreen wore the Deathstroke mask, they didn't call him Deathstroke. You know, they waited and gave that to Slade Wilson. But if it looks like Ravager and it fights like Ravager, it probably is Ravager. Isabel Rochev in the comics did have a history with Oliver's father, and there's a theory that she was that woman you see off screen in season one, you know, with the red shoes. The comic book character was also involved in a plot to use Queen Industries to make a super soldier army. So until the show presents us with some more information, let's just say she's Isabel as Ravager, not Rose Wilson Ravager. The real mystery on the show is, is Summer Glau's history with Slade Wilson and how they started working together. Question number two, Mick Lovin asks, Do you think that the Suicide Squad, Merlin, and Team Arrow will have to team up to beat Team Deathstroke? So I definitely think the Suicide Squad is going to get involved after that, you know, end teaser during the Suicide Squad episode with Amanda Waller. As for Merlin, you know, John Barrowman did just tweet that he was back in Vancouver for filming. He didn't confirm that it was for Arrow, but they are filming the finale right now and they're almost done. So it seems like he won't be back till episode 23. Merlin is really only in it for Thea, so the only way he'd fight with Team Arrow is if he was trying to defend her. We do know that Slade's army will be going crazy all over the city in episode 22, Streets of Fire, so it's possible that something could happen to Thea and it would compel Merlin to help Oliver. I actually really hope that this ends up happening because not only do I love John Barrowman, he's just an amazing actor, I love it when villains end up having to work with heroes, you know, bitter enemies working together for a common goal. It just makes for a really great storytelling. Question number three, Tim asks, do you think that Roy will have his own dark Tinkerbell? Do you think that Thea might become Artemis? And do you think that Slade's army of super soldiers will receive superpowers or they'll be just like Slade and Roy? So lots of questions, so I'll try and keep my answers short. Roy's Tinkerbell would totally have to be Thea. It would just be amazing. Thea is Artemis, I think is a little further off. I think the next big character shift we'll see is Laurel becoming the Black Canary. No idea if that's going to happen in season three, but it all depends on whether or not Katie Lotz dies in the finale. She's listed in the credits on the wiki for episode 22, Streets of Fire, but we still don't know anything about what's happening in the finale. As for the super soldiers, they'll just be like Slade and Roy. Mirakuru just enhances your own natural abilities, so if the criminals weren't good fighters before, Mirakuru isn't going to magically turn them into ninjas. Just think of them as like a super strong infantry. Slade is basically just going to like shoot them like a shotgun at the city, just like spread fire all over the city. Question number four, Galaxy Ronin asks, do you think that Deathstroke is getting all his funding from Hive? Yeah, that Hive teaser during the Russia episode was a really big deal, but we haven't heard a lot about it since. They were the ones that hired Deadshot to kill Diggle's brother, and Deadshot implied that it was because Diggle's brother was into something really shady with Hive. No idea what that's all about yet, but I do think that that plot with Hive might be something that will factor into Season 3. In one of my previous Q&As, I actually listed a bunch of potential villains for Season 3, and Hive was at the top of the list. More on Hive though, in the comics, Slade Wilson's former wife was one of the founding members. There's also Queen Bee, but we haven't learned anything about either of those characters recently, so Hive is still a mystery. I would guess that Slade at least has ties to them. He's probably not running Hive, but he's probably using Hive in the same way that Oliver uses Argus in the Suicide Squad. Question number five, Courageous asks, do you think that Brother Blood might be Jericho? I actually saw a lot of comments about this because of the Isabel Ravager teasers. After the implication that Isabel might be secretly Rose Wilson and Slade's daughter, a lot of people thought that maybe Brother Blood might also be Slade's son secretly. 
But remember in the asylum, Brother Blood's real-life mother talked about him killing his real-life father when he was little, so I think that Slade is just using Blood as a means to an end. That final scene with them together kind of made it seem like Slade has been withholding a lot of critical information from him. So don't be totally surprised if Slade throws him to the wolf, so to speak, in the finale or sometime before that. Question number six, Dragon Animations asks, do you think that Thea could become a villain? So in the real world of the show, no, I don't think so. Thea is always going to be part of Team Arrow, but I do think that she could become Roy's evil Tinkerbell like Shadow is to Slade. I would really like to see her get involved in the action. She's kind of been on the sidelines most of the season, but she does become a big part of episode 20, so look forward to that. Question number seven, Funkasaurus, nice name, asks, For episode 20, Seeing Red, do you think it's going to be a Flash crossover or about Roy as he gets mad? Initially when they announced the title, I actually thought it was going to be a Flash crossover and it was going to be the backdoor pilot, it was going to be like an all Flash episode, but they basically changed that whenever they gave Flash its own one hour pilot. When everything got changed, they basically made episode 19 a crossover with Killer Frost and Vibe, you know, the Flash characters. And now we know that episode 20 is all about Roy. He basically loses his shit and Team Arrow just has to deal with him. He gets super violent and Sarah wants to kill him. Remember, she's that same person that wanted to suicide bomb Slade on the island. She's super dark. Oliver and Thea try to talk him down. You know, he ends up hurting Thea, and Oliver supposedly opens up a can of whoop-ass. No idea how they talk him down or how that's going to play out, but it's all about them dealing with Roy after he starts to go really, really crazy like Slade. Part of the conceit with Sarah trying to put him down, you know, like she did in episode 18, is that she thinks he's uncurable. She thinks there's no way to fix Mirakuru madness. I think that whatever their solution is to Roy's problem is going to be very important for how they deal with Slade in the finale. It seems like the only way to completely fix Roy would be to counteract the effects of the Mirakuru. So maybe they'll either find a way to get Mirakuru out of his system or find a way to, you know, use Star Labs to create some sort of Mirakuru anti-rage pills. Question number eight, Trace Blonde asks, do you think that Amanda Waller is going to use Roy as arsenal in the Suicide Squad? No, I think that after they fix Roy, you know, so to speak, then he'll continue to roll with Team Arrow. Amanda Waller mostly just works with convicts whenever it comes to the Suicide Squad, like full-on supervillains. She might get involved, though, in episode 20 when they try to deal with Roy Rage Roy. Let's try to say that three times fast. Question number nine, Stephen Casey asks, How about when Felicity told Oliver, go get Thea and kill Slade? I actually think that's a really important line. It really defines Felicity's relationship with Oliver. She's like his lightning rod. Oliver is supposed to be their leader. Everyone looks to him for guidance. So he has to have someone that can provide him with some clarity. And that's Felicity. So family aside, you could say that Felicity is the most important person on Team Arrow because she keeps Oliver from going crazy. Question number 10, Ryan asks, Based on the preview for episode 19, do you think that Team Arrow will break into Star Labs to get some type of technology to use against Slade? Yeah, based on the clip, it looks like Sarah comes up with an idea to borrow something from Star Labs. It would also seem that that's the back door for the Flash characters to come on the show. It's Caitlin Snow and Cisco Ramon, two researchers working at Star Labs. In the timeline of events on Arrow, this is all happening in real time, you know, since the accident. So it's been a couple months since the particle accelerator exploded and gave Barry Allen those powers. We don't know if or when Snow will become Killer Frost or Cisco will become Vibe. It would be awesome if it happens in this episode, but as quickly as the stories move in these hour-long episodes, I feel like they're going to save that kind of stuff for the actual Flash TV show. In the clip, Cisco is firing a really big weapon, so that could be what they're trying to steal, but Star Labs is full of really fun toys and tech. And one last bonus question. James Thomas asks, Do you think that the death of a character will be what brings Team Arrow back together? So you are talking about an Agent Coulson Avengers moment. There have been a lot of events recently that suggest that might happen, like Suicide Bomber Sarah, Laurel Black Canary teases, Moira and Detective Lance talking about not being able to take the pain of losing people. Something just tells me that Team Arrow will be fixed again before the finale. I don't think they'll do a straight up copy of what happened in Avengers, but I do think that someone will die in one of those last two episodes. It just feels like the plot has been building towards that kind of moment, but everyone be sure to let me know who you think is going to die. 
And thank you so much everyone for submitting your questions. These bonus Q&A videos are so much fun to do. I'm actually working on a new type of bonus video for Game of Thrones and if it works, I'll start doing it for Arrow and all the other big shows too. It's gonna take a little bit of work to figure out, but I'll keep you guys posted. So like I said, Arrow is gonna be on break next week, so I'll be doing a bonus video. Be sure to subscribe to get it and leave me suggestions for what you wanna see in that. In the meantime, you can click here to get my top 10 WTF moments from the episode and you can click here to get my Winter Soldier review. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.